It's your man, Jay Graves Report, and welcome to the 2017 College Football Weekly Preview, Week 1, presented by your good neighbor, State Farm Agent, Ravi R. Murray, located 3955 Eagle Creek Parkway, Indianapolis, or hit your boy up at 317-297-3804 so you can holler at your boy. Now, y'all know how we get it in, so let's get it in. Previewing the top five ball games of the weekend, so let's get right to it. Now, because it's the first weekend of college football, I got to say, happy college football season. <laughs> hey, this is the time we wait for because we had the most fun doing these college football previews, wrap-ups, watching games all weekend. So, like, typically we do five ball games because it's typically five good ball games. But this weekend, <laughs> it's only about two or three good ball games. I had to come up with a couple more. <laughs> So a couple of these done's gonna have to be sacrifices. Now, first ball game starts out on Thursday night. We got number two, Ohio State, going down to Bloomington to play <laughs> the sacrificial lambs. <laughs> the Hoosiers of Indiana University shows up at the crib. Now, first of all, why is IU playing Ohio State right out the gate? Who was the who was the genius that put that on the schedule? Now I know that the schedules are made four five years in advance. I I realize that, but Indiana, <clears throat> why would you get on national television, invite College Game Day to town, so everybody and Big Mama to watch this foolishness? You got the number two team in America coming to town. After they just got embarrassed by Clemson in the national semifinal in the final four, 31 to nothing, you got your former head coach in Kevin Wilson <coughs> calling the plays, offensive coordinator for Ohio State. <laughs> he going to put up about 7,500 points. <laughs> that dude going for the house. Every time he snapped the ball, he going to throw a bomb. Even if he on the three-yard line, he going to throw a bomb. <laughs> They about to drag IU up and down the field all night. Here's the deal. IU's got nothing. First of all, they got a brand new head coach in Tom Allen. Last time that dog was a head coach, he was at Ben Davis. <laughs> now he got to show up and play against the number two team in the country and go to work on Urban Meyer with after trying to replace running back Devon Redden. They talking about they going to go... Uh, running back by committee. When, when a Dunn tell you he going running back by committee, he got four or five cats he going to throw at you, that means he don't got nothing to throw at you. Now, he out there just throwing stuff up on the wall, see if it stick. <laughs> ah, you get the brakes beat off of them tomorrow. I hope they got the dental records ready, boy. They, they going to need dental records to, to identify these Dunn. Let's move on to the next ball game. Ohio State, blast these boys. Let's move on. Now, second ball game. Down at Lucas Oil Stadium on Saturday afternoon, you got number 16, Louisville. Shows up the to town to play the Purdue Boilermakers or Sacrificial Lamb number two. <laughs> now, here's the deal. Louisville's coming in with the, with the reigning Heisman Trophy winner that nobody's giving any respect to starting this season off. Every campaign you've heard, all the previews, everything, nobody's talking about Lamar Jackson. Now, Lamar Jackson put up 3,500 yards in the air and 30 touchdowns. Then he ran for another 1,500 yards and put up another 21 touchdowns. And boy, trying to act like he's not playing again this year. Now, I get it. They didn't want to give him the Heisman Trophy last year simply because he was playing at Louisville. But he jumped out the birthday cake so quick on a boy that they had to give it to him. He had like 13 touchdowns in the first two ball games. So even though he sputtered down the end of the season, they went 9-4 and four as, a, as a team, there was nobody else in college football last year that had the numbers that, would, that you could actually justify giving it to him. So now that he's starting the beginning of the season, everybody trying to play him like he playing at Louisville. He ain't good enough to win the Heisman. We saw the done go to work. So Purdue is about to be the sacrificial lamb because he can ready to prove all over again that he is as good as 
advertise. So, Purdue, I know y'all got the biggest drum in, in America. <laughs> y'all better throw that dud out there. Y'all better throw it out on the field. <laughs> Trying to trip him when he out there coming down the sideline. Because ain't nowhere in the world you're going to slow this boy down. And Purdue's got a brand new head coach, Jeff Brown. Just taking over. Did, did well at uh, Western Kentucky. 31-10 record, etc. But your quarterback that led the doggone Big Ten in passing last year, David Blah, got hurt on August 21st in a scrimmage. So now that done is questionable coming into this ball game. If he can't play, they got to throw a sophomore out on the field. Ain't going to work, bro. Purdue gets the brakes beat off of him this weekend. Let's move on to the next ball game. Now, we got, let's go up to South Bend. We got Temple showing up to play unranked Notre Dame. Now, we haven't heard much from Notre Dame over the over the offseason. They've done went eight and four last year. Remember, this time last year, all the news on Notre Dame was they had just gotten out of camp. Dunn's got five cats got pulled over in the car with the leprechaun, <laughs> wrestling over a gun and some weed. <laughs> you remember? Hey, they they charged three cats with a gun charge for one gun. How, how in the world you got three cats take one gun charge? <laughs> so this year, what they did when they got out of camp, they tied the leprechaun up behind the dog old field house. They he been in there. They been throwing scraps to him. <laughs> Been throwing scraps to the leprechaun to make sure he don't get nobody in trouble because he a bad influence. Brian Kelly on the hot seat right now. They went eight and four last year. They got to start off with Temple. They should beat Temple at the crib. They got this brand new stadium, you know, did all the renovations to the stadium, like $400 million worth. So all the pressure is on Brian Kelly to keep the leprechaun out of boys' way so they can try to win ball game. Going, you let that done loose. You know, he got a weight problem. And he also got, he out there messing around and get a gun charge on the boy. <laughs> so Notre Dame wins this ball game. Let's move on to the next ball game. Now, it's a big one. Well, it should have been a big one down at Cowboy Stadium. Yeah, number 11, Michigan, showing up to play number 17, Florida. Now, Michigan has already announced that they're going to wear the all maize joints. For the joints duns that don't know what all maize is, that means they're going to wear the all yellow joints that they haven't worn since 1928. On paper, this game was supposed to be a big game, but going into this ball game, Florida's got 10 guys suspended for this ball game. They got nine cats suspended indefinitely because <clears> – <throat> They tried to run a game. They, they took the student IDs, went up in the bookstore, start buying stuff, then go back out on the street and try to sell it for cash. That's the same foolishness as guys back when I was in school um, hassling boys off of long-distance credit cards, all that kind of foolishness. Then you had another cat get caught with some weed in his room, freshman, get caught with some weed, smoking weed. So now you got 10 cats out of this ball game. Starting wide receiver, starting tailback. So now they got Big Mama uh, playing tailback. <laughs> Uncle Junior is playing wide receiver. You know what I mean? You, they about to get drug up and down the field by Jim Harbaugh and company. Jim Harbaugh been so slick, he wouldn't even release his roster until today, which is Wednesday. So he don't want to give up nothing, but he getting ready to beat the brakes off Florida, send them back to the crib. It is what it is. Michigan wins this ball game. Now, Let's go to the big ball game, the only ball game that makes sense this weekend. We got number three, Florida State, going down to Atlanta to play in the new Mercedes-Benz Stadium against number one, Alabama. Now, here's the deal. This is the Chick-fil-A Classic. This is probably the biggest opening weekend ball game of all time when it comes to college football because outside of this ball game, you got number one playing number three. You haven't had anybody play this big of a matchup in terms of ranking since 1985. Or 1983, you had number one Nebraska play Penn State, which was number four in 1983. Then you had number one Oklahoma play number four UCLA in 1986. This is this is the big one. Now, Jalen Hurts returns. Alabama, 
did everything all day. The freshman, now he's a sophomore, a true sophomore, coming in and starting this ball game. On the other side of the ball, you got DeAndre Francois, the ghetto Frenchman. <laughs> Coming in for Florida State, he bought the baddest thing they had since Jameis Winston. So now, which one of these teams come in and put in work? All the analysts, everybody talking about Florida State might be the one to go in here and beat these boys. I'm going to tell you right now, Florida State's not going to win this ball game. Alabama is still Alabama. Until one of these done get caught with some foolishness or Nick Saban decide he want to take off because he tired of the foolishness, Alabama wins this ball game. In Atlanta. Hey, make sure you keep up with your man all season. Every Wednesday, we doing the college football weekly preview. Every Sunday or Monday, depending upon how I feel, we're going to do the recap. But it's your man, Jay Gray's Report. From the jgraysreport.com, or you can hit me up on Twitter at Report, so you can holler at your boy. And always remember that this segment is presented by your good neighbor, State Farm agent, Ravi R. Murray. Located 3955 Eagle Creek Parkway, Indianapolis. Or hit your boy up at 317-297-3804 so you can holler at your boy.